Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Valeri Analytics channel. I am Michael Valeri, and in today's class, we're going to be talking about window functions, how to rank and partition data. What you're going to want to do is open up class number six, window functions and ranking, in the Google Drive link below. And you're going to want to copy and paste all of this class text into a mode analytics terminal under your account that you can log into. After you paste it in here, we're actually not going to write code just yet. First, we're going to understand what ranking data is and two concepts that influence the SQL syntax for ranking data. So I'm going to open up my PowerPoint. Hopefully, you're able to see that. The richest people in the world. If you were to take all of the people in the world and rank them by their net worth, this would be the top 10 richest folks in the world as of, well, 2021 is when this was last updated. It would be fairly straightforward. You'd see Elon Musk followed by Jeff Bezos and some other folks that I'm not entirely familiar with. Bill Gates I am familiar with. So we would be taking every person in the world and then ranking them by their net worth or ordering by their net worth. Furthermore, you could also find the top 10 richest women in the world by ordering folks by their net worth, but then filtering on gender equals female. Furthermore, you could find the top 10 richest folks in China by ordering people by their net worth and then filtering on China. And furthermore, you could do that for India. Now, the question I have for you is that the order by function could only occur once in an SQL code. So if you wanted to aggregate, or excuse me, pull all of this data, the top 10 overall richest people, top 10 women, top 10 in China, and top 10 in India, how could this all be done in one query? This is where ranking and partitioning comes in, and it's what we're going to learn today. Before learning how to rank, what do we need to understand first? We need to understand two concepts, granularity and partitioning. And we need to determine whether granularity change is turned on or off, or partitioning is turned on or off. And this is going to influence the ranking syntax of our SQL code. So let's first start with granularity. What is granularity? Granularity is just the level of detail of your data. You're either going to be zoomed in really far, or you're going to be zoomed out. So for example here, we have a human being as being the most zoomed out version level of detail. And then on the far hand right, we have the DNA being the most zoomed in level of detail. And across data, we can actually change the level of detail or granularity. So how is granularity showed in data? Well, look at it this way. If you were to record every strand of DNA in your body, you'd probably have a very gigantic table numbering in the billions, if not trillions. And I'm not sure how many DNA are in a human being, but I'm sure there's a lot, probably more than a billion or a trillion. And each row would represent a DNA strand, and you would get a corresponding chromosome ID that that DNA is associated with. And then you'd get a corresponding nucleus ID and a corresponding cell ID and then a corresponding human ID. Human ID being one, meaning you're the one human in which this is being charted for. This would be incredibly detailed. And since you're zoomed in so far, it might be hard to make out what the full picture is. So what could you do? If you want to change the granularity of a table, to zoom out, you can use the group by function. The group by function allows you to zoom out or change the granularity of a data set. So for example, if we were looking at a DNA table, we could query from that DNA table and then group by chromosome and then zoom out. And then each row would be unique chromosome ID, which is what you'll see here. So the most zoomed in is the DNA table. But if you wanted to change that DNA table to a chromosome table, you could use the group by. So the group by is used to change the grain, or in other words, zoom out of an already detailed set of data. What are other examples of changing grain? Well, you could be looking at a grain of rice and then zoom out to just the weight of the bag of the entire bag of rice. Another example might be looking at the mass of each individual planet in the solar system. And if you were to zoom out, looking at just the mass of the entire solar system itself or galaxy. 
Other example, you might be looking at the average GPA of individual, of individual students, but if you wanted to change the grain and zoom out, you might look at the average GPA of the entire school. So this concept of changing grain is the idea of zooming out of an already existing piece of data and grouping it on a lower level of detail or a coarser grain. So the idea of changing granularity is when you use the group by to zoom out of a data set. The next concept we're going to learn is a partition. What is a partition? At its simplest definition is a partition is just a divider. So if you've ever been in a limo, if you've ever been in a ride share, you may have noticed that this vehicle has a partition where it can be lowered or raised, and this is to separate the front seat from the back seat. And in a lot of cases, it's used for safety or it's used for privacy. But what this partition does is it's rolled up is that it creates two unique areas of the vehicle. So what a partition does is it creates more than two or more unique areas within a set of data. In this case, it would be a vehicle, the back seat and the front seat. So why is partitioning useful? Well, let's say you're a teacher and you have the GPA of all of the students in your class on an aggregate, a 3.4 GPA, and you're trying to triage what is causing the GPA to be low in your class. What you could do is you could introduce a partition. For example, you could partition on gender and find the GPA of the girl students and then the GPA of the boy students. This partition would allow you to see, hey, it looks like the boy students have a lower GPA. You can actually partition further by, let's say, breaking the boy students up into folks who come from a high income earning family and folks that come from a low income earning family. In this case, you would be partitioning on not only gender, but income level as well. And you might find that, hey, these boy students, the ones that are come from a lower income family, have a lower GPA relative to the higher income male students or boy students. Similarly, you could do the same thing with the girl students, break them up into their income class, lower earners, higher earners, and then you might find a overall trend which is low income earning boys or girls have lower GPAs. So why is this partitioning useful? Partitioning allows you to further diagnose and dissect data to find out what the root cause is. It's incredibly useful. So what can we do after we partition? Well, we can rank folks within those partitions, much like we showed you in the first slide when we were ranking people in China, India, women, men, based on their highest net worth, but in this case, we're doing their GPA rank within a gender. So how do you partition in SQL? You have to use the partition by. So these two concepts, what did we learn about? We learned about changing granularity using the group by to zoom out. And then we learned that partitioning allows us to break data into specific groups. So since we have a good idea of how that works, let's jump back into mode analytics. And we're going to start with ranking data in SQL. Now, the table that I want you folks to be interacting with is called the people in the limo table. So let's do just a select star from mvalary12 dot people in the limo. The whole idea here is that we're going to rank, we're going to see how many different ways we can rank the data in this table. So we have a limousine in which we have Jay-Z and Beyonce in the back seat of the limo, and then we have Oprah and the driver in the front seat, and we have their associated net worths. I'm going to hop over into the, the uh, Student SQL Immersive Guide Class 4 to 7. And if you don't have this open, just feel free to follow along as I just fill in this table. So the table that's here is the same one that's in Mode Analytics. But just using our brains, how would we rank the people in this car based on their net worth, meaning the person who has the highest net worth to the person with the lowest net worth? Well, Oprah looks like she has the highest net worth in the vehicle. 
So in order to determine the rank of Oprah based on her net worth, what did we have to do? We had to look, look at the net worth column and then compare it to all the other values in that column. So the way these window functions work conceptually is that they look at a row of data and then they evaluate it against all other rows in that column that you want it to look at. So Oprah is the richest person. The second wealthiest is Jay-Z. The third is Beyonce. And then the driver is the fourth wealthiest person in the car. Now let's take another look here. What if I introduce a partition? It says net worth rank by location. Okay, so let's say this. Let's say we roll up the partition and then we say who is the wealthiest person in the back seat of the car and who is the wealthiest person in the front seat of the car. All right, let's do Jay-Z first. So when we roll up the partition, now we're only comparing Jay-Z to the people in Jay-Z's location. So just to Beyonce in this case. So relative to Beyonce, since Beyonce is the only person in the backseat of the car, Jay-Z's net worth is one in the backseat. He's the richest person in the backseat of the car. Beyonce is the second. Then if we move to the front seat of the car, Oprah, in this case, is actually the richest person in the front seat. And the driver is the second wealthiest person in the front seat of the car. So what does partitioning do? We're able to rank within groups when we introduce a partition. And you'll see that can be very beneficial if you are, let's say, Beyonce, because you go from being the third wealthiest person in the vehicle to being the second wealthiest person in the back seat of the vehicle. And if you're Jay-Z, you go from being the second wealthiest person in the entire vehicle to being the first wealthiest person in the back seat of the vehicle. So the more and more partitions you introduce, you can actually increase your level of ranking. And that's where you start getting really, really wild football and baseball stats. For example, sportscasters love to do partitioning in which they say something like, well, I've deleted it <laughs> from my slide on accident. That's a bummer. But they'll say, this red shirt quarterback had the most touchdown passes on a Tuesday night when it was negative two degrees out. Well, there's probably not that many red shirt quarterbacks who are playing football at ne negative two degrees at night, but hey, you could be number one in that category. So partitioning can be used in really creative ways to become number one. So let's actually write the code now, now that we understand how these window functions work. They look at a column of data and then they evaluate it across all other rows of that data. I'm gonna hop back into mode analytics and we're just gonna start with these ranking functions. And I've written no grain change, no partitioning here, but I'm actually gonna delete this stuff because we wanna define this ourselves. Okay, let's start with the opening question. It says, rank people by their net worth. Well, what does every SQL query need? We need select. And what else do we need? We need from. All right, so what do we wanna do? We wanna rank people by their net worth. We're using the people in the limo table. That's the table in question. So we're gonna do mvalary12 dot people in the limo, excellent. And let's just pull up it, pull open the schema here on the far hand right. So if we want to rank people by their net worth, what is a column that we're going to want to see? Well, we're probably going to want to see the person's name. And in this case, this is a dimension. And then we're probably going to want to see their net worth in millions of dollars. In this case, this is going to be a dimension. And then what else do we want to see? Well, we want to see their rank, so the net worth rank. We want to have a number assigned. This is what's going to be called a window function in this case. Whenever we're ranking data, we're, we're creating this thing called a window function. You may have noticed that we're introducing a new type of column into the select statement. You folks learned about dimensions. You learned about dims, ags, and now there's this new thing called a window. So we're going to get really good at identifying if something is a window function or not. And when you rank data, you're creating a window function because you're evaluating a row of data across all the other rows, relatively speaking. 
Now, if we're ranking people by net worth, whenever we're ranking, we have to ask ourselves two questions. One, is there a granularity change? Is there a grain change? If you're ranking people and the table is already at a people grain, do you need to change the granularity? And in this case, no. The table's already people, and then we're ranking people, so therefore we're not zooming out. We're staying at the people grain. No granularity change. Number two, is there partitions? Are we trying to rank people within a specific group? Well, no, we're only trying to rank people within the limo itself, and every person's in the limo, so we don't need to introduce a partition. So there's no partitioning going on. Whether we pull the grain change lever or pull the partition lever, it's going to influence the way that we write our window function and our overall SQL. So in this case, since there's no grain change and there's no partition, we can begin writing our window function for rank. The way the rank function works is you're going to write the word rank, left, right parentheses, looks super odd, I know. And then what you're going to want to do next is say, hey, over what window of data? So inside the over clause, you want to say, I want to rank based on which column or window do I want to evaluate the rank over? Remember when we used our eyes to look at Jay-Z's net worth and then compare it to all the other net worths in the column? That's what we're going to rank our window function over. So we're going to say rank over the order of the net worth of the person. Net worth MM column. And what we want to say is that the wealthiest person is at the top and the least wealthiest person is on the bottom. So we're going to say DESC. And we're going to call this as net worth rank. So we're writing rank, left, right parenthesis, over the order of the net worth column in descending order, the wealthiest person on top, least wealthy on bo bottom, and then we're going to assign a rank to them. Then we're going to run it and see what happens. There we go. We have Oprah at the top, Jay-Z, Beyonce, Driver, their net worth rank. So what we did is we were able to assign a unique value to each person based on their net worth. Window functions. Window functions, if you use one, you don't need a group by. Remember that too. You don't need a group by to run a window function. Let's move on to the next question. Let's rank gender by net worth, which is let's add up the net worth of all the girls in the car and add up all the net worth of all the boys in the car and then compare them to each other to see who makes more money. Is it the, is it the girls on aggregate or is it the men on aggregate? So let's ask yourself this. The two questions when we're ranking data. Are we changing the grain? Are we zooming out at all? We are indeed. We're starting with a people table. The people in the limo table is at every row as a person. And we're trying to go from people to a gender grain. We're zooming out. So yes, we are changing the grain of the table. We're going from people to gender. Gender is a much coarser level of detail. So we've been zooming out of the data. So that's true. What does that need mean? We need a group by. We know we're going to see a group by appear in our code. The next question is partitions being added. In this case, no. We're just comparing the boys and girls in the car relative to each other, so we don't need to introduce partitioning. No partitions. All right, so let's run the select statement. And then let's run from, we're going to do M. Valeri 12, people in the limo again. Excellent. And in the select statement, it says, we want to see rank gender by net worth. So what do we want to see first? Well, we're going to want to see the gender of the person in the car, which is going to be a dimension. And then we're going to want to see the total net worth of that gender. Total net worth. To find the total net worth of a particular gender, we're going to sum the net worth MM as total net worth, right? And then next, what we want to see is, and that's going to be an aggregate, folks. 
All right, what's next? Well, we're going to want to see the net worth rank of the gender. When we're ranking something, what does it sound like to you? It's a window function. Okay, what happens when you mix dimensions with aggregates? You need a group by. So the group by is going to go down here. What goes in the group by? Only the dimensions, gender. So window functions will never appear in the group by. It, the rules hold constant. Dimensions only go in the group by. You don't need to put window functions in there. Okay, so how do we write the window function for net worth rank gender? Well, what comes first? You're going to write, write the word rank, left, right, parentheses, over what window of data? So we're going to write over, left, right, parentheses. Since we're changing the grain, we first need to sum the net worth column. Excuse me. We need to, we need to order by the sum of the net worth column descending. So because we changed the grain, you'll notice that we added sum in front of the net worth column because we're zooming out. And so we need to aggregate if we're zooming out. So we throw the order by right there. So you'll notice a big difference between these two pieces of code. When you rank people by their net worth, you're not throwing the sum function in the window function. But when you're ranking gender by their net worth, you are adding the sum function inside the window function because you're zooming out or changing the grain to be coarser. Now let's highlight the code and run it. And what do we get? We get the total net worth of the females in the vehicle, which is 320 million, or this is supposed to be million and then the males in the vehicle in millions. So the women in the vehicle on aggregate are more wealthy than the men in the vehicle. All right, let's move on to the fourth question. It says, let's rank people by net worth within a location. Before we go into here, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna rank people by their net worth within a location. So we have to say, question one, are we changing the grain? Well, if we're still ranking people, then if the table's already at a people grain, then there's no grain change. We're not zooming out. Hold on here. I just need to... Uh... Okay. One second. Yep, there's just a lot of, lot of notifications. And we do this live, so sometimes there's a little, little issue. Are we changing the grade? No grain change. Second question, if you're ranking people by net worth with an allocation, is there a is there a partition being added? Well, if you want to compare the gender of people within a location, so look in the back seat and compare the females and males, and then look in the front seat and compare the females and males, you're going to be adding a partitioning or a divider. So partition needs to be added. All right, so let's take a look. We're going to run the select statement from... We're going to rank people by net worth within a location. So what is a column that we're going to want to see is probably the name of the person. I'm just going to pause here for a second. I'm going to have to edit this out, unfortunately. Or not. I won't edit it out. <laughs> I just closed it. Okay, ranking people by net worth within a location. We're going to want to see the person's name. We're going to want to see their net worth, MM. We're going to want to see the location of this person, where they are in the vehicle. From what table? People in the limo. All right. The person's name is a dimension. Their net worth is a dimension because in this case, we're not changing the granularity. There's no need to add a group by. We're not aggregating their net worth. 
because it already exists at the people grain. Their location is a dimension. And then the other thing that we need to know is their, their net worth rank within a location. That's a window function. Because what we're trying to do is say, hey, compare all the backs, back seat people in the car to each other and compare all the front seat people in the car to each other. So net worth rank location, we're going to write a window function, which is rank, left, right, parenthesis, over what window of data do we want to evaluate this on? Well, first, I need you to partition. So we're going to add this partition by function inside of our over clause. And we're going to say, can you partition by their location first? Can you look at the back seat people and then the front seat people, break them into unique groups? And then can you order those results by their net worth, MMDESC, descending as the net worth rank? So what we've done here is we've broken up the data into backseat people, front seat people, and then we're comparing the backseat people to each other only and the front seat people to each other only. And then we're going to run selected. Then we look at the result set and we see, hey, okay, since we added a partition, we're only evaluating the backseat people relative to each other and the front seat people relative to each other. So what this partition does is it introduces a barrier in which you will only evaluate your window function within the partition itself. Let's look at the last question. Are we changing grain here? Ranking gender by net worth within a location. Well, the table is at the people grain, and so I'm zooming out to the gender grain. So if I'm zooming out, I am changing the grain of the table. And therefore, I'm going to have to use the group by. I know that in my final code. I'm going from a people to a gender grain. Another question is, are we adding partitions to this data set? Yes. We are comparing gender within a location. We're saying if you add up all the males and females in the back seat, compare their salary. And if you add up all the females and males in the front seat, compare their net worth. Excuse me, not salary. So what do we got to do here? There's two levers being pulled, the grain lever and the partition lever. So let's write in our select statement, select... from people in the limo nice and the first column we want to see is the gender which is a dimension the next column we want to see is the total net worth of that gender that's going to be an aggregate another thing we're going to want to see is the location of the person in the car. And then finally, we're going to want to see what the gender net worth is within a location, which is going to be a window function. What happens when you mix dimensions with aggregates? You need a group by. So the things you're going to be grouping on in this case are the gender and the location. Let's write the window function here. Window function starts with rank, left, right, parentheses, over what window do we want to evaluate this over? It is the, well, first you need to partition by the location again. So we want to break up this data into two unique groups, the back seat people and the front seat people. Then after you do that, since we're evaluating on gender and we need to aggregate or zoom out based on that, we're going to say order by the sum of the net worth, DESC, as gender net worth within a location. Window functions just stay in the select statement. They don't need to go into the group by. Let's highlight it and run it and see what happens.
Looks like total net worth doesn't exist. It hates it. Oh, it's because I didn't aggregate net worth. My bad. So we're going to say sum net worth NM as a total net worth. Then we're going to highlight it and run selected. And indeed, what do we get? We get the backseat people evaluating against each other. So the total net worth of the males in the backseat, they're the wealthiest relative to the females. And then the front seat, it's the females over the males in the back seat or the front seat. Now, what you can do next is you can jump into this activity and see if you can actually use the mechanics table to answer these four questions. So take this opportunity to pause the video and see if you can work on these problems. And just remember, you're going to be asking yourself two questions here for each of these. Is, are you changing grain? And are you adding partitions? And I think what we can do is I can actually go through each of these and I can help you with that part and then you can write the code after if you want to. So are we changing the grain if we're ranking mechanics based on their repair count? I think what's helpful is I'm going to pull this table up as is. So I'm just going to select star from mvalary12 dot mechanics. And what does this table look like? We have a list of mechanics based on their location. They have a unique mechanic ID, the total number of repairs they've made, and whether this person's a manager or not. So for this first question, if we're ranking mechanics based on the repair count, are we changing their grain? In this case, well, we're staying at the mechanic grain, so there's no grain change. We're going to stay at the mechanic grain. And do we need to introduce partitioning? No, we're just comparing all the mechanics relative to each other. So no partitions in this case. Locations ranked by repair count. If you're going to, going to rank all the locations, so which one has the highest number of repairs? Is it west, east, north, or south? Well, if you're going from a mechanic grain to a location grain, you're zooming out, so there is a grain change here because you're moving from a mechanic grain to a location grain. And if you're comparing all the locations relative to each other, there's no partitioning needed. What about number three? If you're ranking mechanics within a location by repair count, so what you're saying is compare all the west mechanics to each other, compare all the east mechanics to each other, compare all the north mechanics to each other, and all the south mechanics to each other. So you're going to break them into groups and then compare them. So if we're staying at the mechanic grain, in this case, there is no grain change again if we're staying at a mechanic grain. And are we adding partitions? You bet we are. There is partitions here because we need to compare the mechanics relative to the people within their region. All right, number four. It says let's compare managers and non-managers to each other within a location. Okay, so is there going to be a grain change here? You're going from a people grain to a whether they're a manager or a non-manager grain. Uh, that means you're going to be zooming out. So you're going to be changing your grain here. And if you want to compare the managers and non-managers within a location, right? Compare all the non-managers and managers to each other in the west. Compare the managers and non-managers to each other within the north. You're going to be adding partitions here. Let's see if we can answer these questions. So the first one says... Mechanics ranked by repair count. I'm going to open up the schema on the far hand right so I can see it in front of me. That'll really help me write this code. All right. Every SQL query, select and from. We've learned that since day one. mvalary 12mechanics 
if I want to rank the mechanics, I'm going to say, hey, show me the mechanic name. Show me their repair count. And then show me their repair count rank. Mechanic is a dimension. Repair count's a dimension because we're not changing the grain. We're staying at the mechanic grain, so there's no need to group by. There's no need to aggregate. We're going to stay at dim. The repair count rank is a window function. So in order to write a window function, what do we need to do? First, we need to write the word rank, left, right, parenthesis, followed by the window itself, which is using the over function, left, right, parenthesis. And in there, we say, in which way do you want us to evaluate the data over? It is the order of the repair count with the highest repair count on top and then the lowest on the bottom, so DESC. I'm going to call this whole thing as repair count rank. Let's see if this works. There we go. We have the mechanic with the highest repair count at the top and the one with the lowest at the bottom. <coughs> and then we have a unique rank assigned to them. You'll see there that AJ, Michael, and Isaac are all tied for fifth place. It's because they have the same number of repair counts. So when you use this rank function, just know that if you've got duplicates, or if you have ties, it's going to repeat the rank over and over again. And there's actually a way around that if you don't want to repeat it, which I can show you guys at the very end. Let's look at question two, locations ranked by repair count. We know we're going to need select and from yet again. So I'm going to throw this in here from envalary 12 people in the limo. And in my select statement, what do I want to do? Well, I want to look at the location of this individual. Or I mean, the location of these individuals. I want to look at their total repair count. That's an aggregate. Because we're zooming out, we need to aggregate the data. We need to group by it. So we need to, we need to aggregate the total repair count, which would just be simply the sum of the repair count itself. And then what else do we want to see? Ah, we want to see the location rank on repair count. That is a window function. What happens when we mix dimensions with aggregates? You need a group by. So this is really interesting. The group by allows you to zoom out or change the grain of the data to be more coarser. See how powerful the group by is? It does so much. So we're going to write location here because it's the only dimension. And then the window function, we're going to start the window function with rank, left, right, parenthesis, over which window of data do we want to evaluate this on? Well, since there's no partitioning, all we need to do is just the order of the sum of the repair count. Since we're zooming out, we need to sum the repair count column, and we're going to do DESC after that. Oop. As location rank on repair count. It says repair count doesn't exist. Oh, it's because it's from the people in the limo table. That's not the table. It's just called the mechanics table. My bad. So let's write mechanics there. We'll run the code. And we see that the east location, since we zoomed out to the location grain, has the highest number of repairs, followed by west, north, and south. Furthermore, you could reverse this ranking if you change this to ASC, for example. It would reverse the ranking. Okay, let's look at question three. It says rank mechanics within a location by the repair count. So compare the mechanics within each region to each other. In this case, there's no grain change, but we're adding a partition. Ooh, so we're pulling the partition lever. So let's just do select. From Envalary 12, people in the limo, and it says we want to look at mechanics ranks within a location by the repair count. Well, we're going to add the mechanic so we can find out their name. That's a dimension in this case. We want to look at the repair count of that mechanic. 
that's a dimension. Since we're not changing the grain, right? We're just still staying at a mechanic grain. We're just comparing the mechanics to each other within a location. Next thing we want to do is pull in their location. And then we want to look at their repair count rank within a location. Location is a dimension. Repair count rank within a location is our window function. So window functions, how do they start? Rank, left, right parentheses, over what window are we evaluating this over? Well, first, we need to partition by their location. So put all the west people into one bucket, all the east people, all the south people, all the north people, and then compare them to each other after that based on their order of their repair count. DESC. We'll call this repair count rank within location. So in this case, we just pulled the partition lever only. So there's no need to use a group by or zoom out because we're still at the mechanic grain. It says mechanic doesn't exist. It's because I'm still talking to the people in the limo table. Why do I keep doing that? It's just the mechanics table. Nice, repair count rank within a location. So what this does is that in the east, You'll see Isaac, Michael, and AJ. Well, relative to each other, they're all tied for first. In the north, it's Grant, followed by Stephen, followed by Alex. In the south, well, it's just Evan in there. And then Mark is, has the most repairs within the west location. Here's what's interesting, though, right? You see that Isaac, Michael, and AJ are tied in the east because we're ranking within a location, right? We've introduced a partition. Um, Let's say you don't want one to repeat itself. There's another function you can use in which the rank number won't repeat itself, but you can use the function called row number. So there's tons of other window functions, and unfortunately, I cannot review them all because there's so many. But if I show you the row number version, you'll see that this column here is using the rank function and that this column here is using repair count rank within a, within a location row number and it assigns two and three even though there's a tie. So if you don't want, if you want a unique rank for each row, you can use row number instead as a workaround. All right, let's do the last question here. It says, rank the managers and non-managers within a location by repair count. In this case, we're zooming out. We're going from a mechanic grain to a manager, non-manager grain. So we need to group by, we know that, and we're adding partitions because we're comparing the non-managers and managers to each other within a location. So we're gonna write our select statement. Every SQL query needs it. We're gonna write from and we know we're talking to mvalary 12mechanics table. And one of the columns that we're gonna to wanna to choose is is manager. And that's a dimension. Another column that we're gonna to wanna to see is the location of this manager. So that's a dimension. Another column that we're gonna to wanna to see is the total repair count of the, of the manager and non-manager. This is going to be an aggregate. Since we're zooming out, we need to group by, so we need to aggregate the total repair count, which is simply going to be just the sum of the repair count column. And then the last column that we're going to want to see is, we're going to want to see the rank within a location. So specifically, the manager non-manager rank within a location. This is a window function. What do we know when you mix an aggregate and dimension? You need a group by. So down here, we're going to write group by. And I'll zoom in so it's a little easier to read. What are we grouping by? Only the dimensions. 
Window functions will never go in the group by. Just dimensions, always dimensions, location. Okay, how do we write the ranking function? Always starts with rank, left, right parentheses, over. What window do we want this evaluated over? Well, first, we want you to partition, so we're going to write partition by. And so break these up based on their location. And then after that, can you order by, and since we're changing the grain, the sum of the repair count, DESC. All right. Then we're going to highlight it and run it. So what have we done here? We've compared the manager's and non-manager's repair count within a location itself. So in the east, the non-managers have the highest number of repairs, and the managers have the lowest. And you can see how that story changes based on different regions. So what am I getting at here when you're talking about window functions and ranking? Here's the takeaway. You're always going to be changing the granularity. You're, you're going to evaluate if you're changing the granularity or not. And you're going to be evaluating if you add partitions. That's going to influence the syntax of your code. So in summary, there's four different scenarios. Let's say you're changing grain, no partitions for example. You're going to need a group by in your code. And you want to put the sum of whatever column or the aggregation, the aggregation of whatever column in the window function. Let's say you're changing grain and you're adding partitions. Same thing. You need a group by in the code. You want to put the ag in the window function. You need a group by in the code. You want to put the ag in the window function and partition by in window function. Let's say no grain change, no partitions. There's no group by. no ag in the window function. Let's say there is no grain change and there is partitions. This is the other combination. No group by, no ag in window function. but you need a partition, partition by clause, partition by clause. All right, folks, so homework. Where do you start next? I talk about the SQL skills assessment, which I just want to briefly go over right now. The SQL immersive skills assessment is inside the Valeri Analytics folder. You're going to want to click on YouTube SQL immersive skills assessment. And the way this exercise works is that you're going to be pretending that you're working for a fictitious bike company called Valeri Biking. And you're an analyst, and you're, respon you're responsible for answering all of these questions. The grading is something that I will do. I wouldn't be too concerned with it. Make sure you look through the rules. But what I want to talk about is that you're interacting with these bike tables in the M Valeri 12 schema customers, orders, staff, stores, order items, categories, products, stocks, brands, etc. What you'll notice that is that each section of the immersive skills assessment covers a specific topic. For example, part one 
covers select from, order by, and limit. There's three questions. It tells you which table you're going to use. They're always appended with the word bike in front of it. Part two, you're concerned with looking at the where clause. It tells you which tables to use. You're only being tested on the where clause here. Part three in the group by, you're being tested on the group by clause here. What's interesting about these sections is that as, as you move through each part in the where clause, you still need to know how to use select from, order by, and limit. If you move on to the group by, you still need to know how to use where, select from, order by, and lim limit. It's very iterative. You might even be asked to reverse engineer a table, for example, where I give you the resolve output, but you have to build the code yourself. Part four is joins, tells you which tables to use. You're going to have to join here. Part five is case statements. Remember how there was no homework on case statements? The homework is just doing the skills assessment for case statements. So questions one through two. You might have to reverse engineer code based on looking at a chart, like total bikes by bike type and frame type, and then build the code. So sometimes there are word problems. Sometimes you have to reverse engineer a chart into a code. Part six, window functions and partitions. That's what we covered today. You have to be able to rank bikes, categories, products, brands. You have to understand what granularity is. You have to understand what partitioning is in order to answer these questions. And then part seven is subqueries and CTEs, which is what we're going to cover in the last class. And then you'll be able to answer part seven. So get ahead, get started on working on this assessment. If you want me to grade it, reach out to me and I'll be more than happy to schedule an appointment with you. Thanks for joining us today and we'll see you guys again soon. Bye.